I'm going to show you guys 10 PS4 Pro games with uncapped frame rates that have now been able to reach a locked 60 frames per second when playing on the PlayStation 5. Number 10. Kingdom Hearts 3. Coming in at a fixed resolution of 2304 by 1296, you can expect the frame rate to fluctuate anywhere from 43 to 52 frames per second. There is, however, a 30 frames per second cap option, but apparently there's an issue with frame pacing, so you might not want to use that setting. It's not awful on the PS4 Pro, but rarely does it hit the coveted 60 frames per second. More often than not, you're going to be seeing mostly 47 frames per second. There is, however, a trick you can do which does help performance stay closer to a target 60, but it requires locking the resolution to 1080p. Fortunately, with the PlayStation 5, you don't have to do any of that crap. With next-gen horsepower, you can keep the 2960p resolution and a locked 60 frames per second. I noticed the jump in performance the instant I picked up the controller. Talk about a day and night difference. I couldn't believe how quickly everything was moving. Gone are the inconsistent frame rates and frame pacing issues that plagued previous gen. What you're left with now is nothing but a locked 60 frames per second. If you're even remotely curious as to what PS5 can do to a PS4 title, then you have to check out Kingdom Hearts 3. If you're not a fan of the franchise, however, then keep watching, because I'll show you more games that work even better. This is Sierra 37 requesting clearance to land on Platform 2. Over. Number 9. Killzone Shadowfall, rocking a native 1920 by 1080p image with an uncapped frame rate that can fluctuate from 30 to 50 frames per second. This is one PS4 launch title that has benefited greatly from next gen. Multiplayer is another story, so I'm not even going to get into that. Let's just stick with the single player campaign. In theory, it can go up to 60 frames per second on the PS4 Pro. Realistically, it's closer to the mid 30s. I did, however, see it hit 50 frames for a split second one time. I think I was looking at the sky or something. If you're not keen on an uncapped frame rate, there is an option to lock it to 30, which if you're playing on a smaller 1080p display, the game looks absolutely amazing. I've noticed it running a lot smoother now on the PlayStation 5. It might even be a locked 60 frames per second. There's no longer that weird judder you get with the PS4 Pro. Hopefully with a PS5 patch that upscales to 4K, I might just be tempted to go back and actually finish this game. Number 8 until Dawn, an early PS4 title that's sort of made better on the PS4 Pro, courtesy of Boost Mode. Running at a native 1920 by 1080p image, you can expect to see frame rates ranging anywhere from 25 to 45 frames per second. I think it went up to 47 one time. The uncapped frame rate is enabled by default, so don't bother looking for an option to turn it off. In hindsight, this is probably one of those PS4 titles that should have been locked at 30 frames per second. Fortunately, most of the game is spent exploring from a fixed camera angle, so there is isn't too much need for a high frame rate. For some reason, I wasn't expecting much of a difference when moving over to the PS5, mainly because the game is so dark that a jump in frame rate would be hard to notice. Boy, was I wrong. Upon loading up a chapter, I could instantly tell the frame rate had been giving a big boost. I never knew this game could look so good. If you have yet to play this underrated hidden gem, then please do so now on the PlayStation 5. It feels and looks like a brand new game. Number 7. Shenmue 3. Here's another game that was left with an uncapped frame rate. On the PS4 Pro, you can expect a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080p, running at anywhere from 45 to 60 frames per second. As a whole, Shenmue 3 looks rather impressive. There's a lot of fine detail in the environments, as well as the excellent use of lighting throughout the day and night cycles. Unfortunately, the inconsistent frame rate really hurts the overall presentation. It's nowhere near unplayable, but I'd be lying if I said the game wouldn't benefit from a 30 frames per second cap. Actually, you know what would be even better? if the game was somehow able to run at a locked 60 frames per second. Moving over to the PS5, I've noticed just that. I've only spent a little bit of time with the game, but was able to notice the jump in performance instantly. It may not change your opinion on the franchise. You're either gonna love it or hate it at this point. But I will admit, a smoother frame rate does make it more appealing. Number 6. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Depending on how you want to play, there are three different display modes. 4K, enriched visuals, and high frame rate. The first two comes with a greater level of visual fidelity at the cost of gameplay performance. High frame rate, on the other hand, attempts to hit that 60 frames per second target, but with a reduction in texture filtering. The 1080p image is nice, but on a 4K display, it can look a little rough, 
The game does run smoother when it's able to hit that 60 frames per second mark, but unfortunately, it rarely stays at that number. It's closer to 45 frames per second. I did notice, however, the more linear sections were able to hit 60. It's not perfect, but it's nice to have this option. Taking this game over to the PS5, I've noticed all traces of frame drops and frame pacing issues have been eliminated. You won't be able to see much of a difference at first since the PS4 Pro runs the beginning part of the game pretty well. It isn't until you arrive at the geothermal valley later on. On the PS4 Pro, this is one of the major stress points for the system, and it clearly shows when the frames start dropping. Fortunately, the PlayStation 5 easily breezes through this section. The difference was day and night as I ran through the entire area without a single frame drop. Now that is impressive, considering how many patches were released trying to fix this issue on the PS4 Pro. The PS5 does it without even lifting a finger. Number 5. The Last of Us Remastered this is one of the few games on PS4 Pro that can get close to a 4K image running at 60 frames per second. To be exact, it's actually 3200 by 1800p with a target 60 frames per second. There are some dips into the low 50s, but usually occur during the more intense boss encounters. One minor setback would be the low quality shadows you have to contend with. Honestly, I didn't even notice them. For a game that looks this good, I'm willing to sacrifice shadows for a more stable frame rate. And now with the power of the PlayStation 5, we can finally get that locked 60 frames per second we've always wanted. Sure, the jump in performance isn't as noticeable during the beginning parts of the game, but rest assured, the later, more intense encounters are buttery smooth. All we need now is a 4K patch with a locked 60 frames per second and life will be complete. And while they're at it, might as well add in those high quality shadows everyone is always bitching about. Number 4. Final Fantasy 15 offering three different display settings, high, light, and steady. The high setting runs the game at a dynamic 4K resolution with poor frame pacing. Steady gives you 1080p with a locked 30 frames per second, but with downgraded graphics. And then there's the light mode, which is where I'm hoping the improvements will be made. Prior to the update, this mode offered a 1080p image resolution at a locked 30 frames per second. After the update, the frame cap was removed, allowing for a more variable frame rate. Expect to see anything from 35 to 50 frames per second. You can get six but that would require you to look at the ground the entire time. The frame rate was pretty inconsistent in my opinion. It was just all over the place. Moving over to PS5, I'm very happy to say Final Fantasy 15 is a locked 60 frames per second using the light setting. You don't realize how unstable the frame rate is on PS4 Pro until you experience a stable 60. May I also mention the load times have been vastly improved as well. Loading a previous save file on the PS4 Pro seemed like it took an eternity. I'm not even gonna bother showing the full length of it because that would just make the video longer than it needs to be. The game may not be the best in the series, but I actually thought it was a lot better than Final Fantasy 13. Hate me, flame me, crucify me, I don't give a crap. If you're a fan of the franchise, then Final Fantasy 15 is worth at least one playthrough. Number 3. Resident Evil 2. On the PS4 Pro, Resident Evil 2 currently outputs a 2880 by 1620p image. Not quite native 4K, but still impressive considering the frame rate it's running at. The game targets 60 frames per second and surprisingly enough, actually stays there most of the time on PS4 Pro. There were some moments where you would see sudden drops to the low 40s, but those didn't happen too often. Realistically, you can expect to stay anywhere between 55 and 58 frames per second, which isn't bad at all. With the jump over to the PlayStation 5, you can expect to see the last remaining frames further smoothly smooth out. Not a big noticeable difference like the last previous titles I mentioned, but it is nice to know the game is now a locked 60 frames per second. If you haven't played this game yet, then now is the best time to do it. This is, in my humble opinion, one of the best remakes I've ever played. Number 2. God of War. I still can't believe how amazing this game looks. I mean, look at it. There's a resolution mode that offers 2160p through checkerboard rendering, but I've come to realize the cap 30 frames per second just doesn't do it for me anymore. Switching over to performance mode, which allows for an uncapped frame rate, makes me finally realize how important 60 frames per second really is. The game doesn't get anywhere near the target 60, but it does offer a smoother experience, at least in my opinion. You can expect to see averages in the mid 40s, which isn't bad considering what's happening on the screen. This is a visually intensive game with a lot of graphical effects going on, so staying anywhere in the mid to high 40s consistently is nothing short of a miracle. PlayStation 5 on the other hand is a whole other story. This thing has no trouble keeping the game locked at 60. As you can see, the jump in performance is apparent the second you boot up the game. The only downside is that performance mode still only outputs the 1080p. But here's the thing, it actually looks quite sharp on a 4K display. Granted, it's not as detailed as the resolution mode, but I'm willing to sacrifice a few pixels for better performance. Here's hoping Sony releases a 4K 60 frames per second patch soon. Number 1. 
Assassin's Creed Unity. By far, in my opinion, the game with the most approved. In terms of performance, I remember AC Unity being a complete mess at launch. The visuals looked good, and they still are to some extent, but the frame rate was downright garbage. Screen resolution currently stands at 1600 by 900 p with a 30 frames per second cap. There were numerous patches released for the game, and I remember Digital Foundry doing a comparison for each of them. The results were never really any good, and sometimes I wondered if the patches even did anything. Although there is a 30 frames per second cap currently in place, that wasn't always the case. In its original build, AC Unity was actually released with an uncapped frame rate. That's right ladies and gentlemen, if you install AC Unity without downloading the patch, you can get the game to run at an unlocked frame rate. Unfortunately, it still runs like shit regardless, but as you can already tell by this point, we've got an ace up our sleeves. If you play Assassin's Creed Unity on the PlayStation 5 without installing the update, you can actually run the game at a locked 60 frames per second. Yes, I said that right. It's a locked 60 frames per second, and boy does it look beautiful. Sadly, there's no 4K patch for the game, so you'll still be playing in 900p, but the increase in performance more than makes up for it. If the original build of this game left a sour taste in your mouth, then I urge you to give it another shot. This is how the game was meant to be played. It's just unfortunate we had to wait all these years in order to do so. If none of the games I mentioned above interest you, then keep this in mind. If the game has an option of running in an unlocked frame rate, more likely than not, it'll be able to hit that 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5. So, if there are games you haven't yet played on the PS4, then I highly suggest playing them on the PS5. The more powerful hardware almost guarantee a better playing experience. Experience. These games were always meant to be played at a locked 60. We just had to wait a while till the technology was able to keep up. So what are you waiting for? Run, don't walk, and go put down that PS5 pre-order. Now if you enjoyed this video and want to see more reasons why you need to upgrade to the PS5, then click the links on the screen or the ones that are pinned down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.